Toronto a la carte's eight vendors were open Sunday, but Nathan Phillips Square patrons didn't seem to mind. These guys have amazing food and it's worth your money. Downtown for me is always having a hot dog and french fries, so I guess it's kind of like a tradition with the family. We came all the way to Mel Lastman Square today to try Toronto's a la carte, but because they're closed, we had to go for a hot dog. It's the third location we went to where there wasn't anything available. The new chain offers nutritious meals from around the globe, but Trontonians say street meat is their preferred food of choice on the sidewalk. We come downtown to get hot dog and fries because you can always get Thai food anywhere else inside too. Cassandra Roy said she buys hot dogs and fries from the trucks in front of City Hall every day, but hasn't heard of the City of Toronto's new street vendor chain. You've never tried a Toronto a la carte? Nope, I don't think so. Have you ever seen the signs or anything? Nope. Have you ever heard about Toronto a la carte? No. And while Pat Walker's hot dog stand is open 24-7, he said his a la carte neighbor operates usually only two to three days a week. For Sun Media, I'm Lacey Adelik. Stefano Demera admits to throwing his cigarette butts on the ground. Yeah, I do. Every time? <laughs> Every time, yeah. He represents one in three Canadians that admit to littering. Because anytime someone's smoking a cigarette and if they go to the end of it, they're not going to keep it in their hand or put it in their pocket. They're going to throw it because it stinks. Last year, 230,000 cigarette butts were collected in Canada as part of the TD Shoreline Cleanup. It was here at the Unwin Bridge area on Lake Ontario where 400 kilograms of litter were picked up last year. Among the items picked up in the challenge were a bowling pin, a can of turpentine, and a picture of Jesus Christ. Last year, 2,949 participants picked up 5,408 kilograms of litter. But other smokers, like Helen, claim they hold on to their butts until they find a proper disposal site. I'm very conscious of that um, because I do recognize that uh, um, it is a form of littering. Cleanup manager Jill Dwyer says for some reason people don't consider throwing cigarette butts on the ground as litter. No one ever thinks that that little butt will ever add up and so they just throw it. They not think about where it ends up. Meanwhile, it ends up in our water or sewers or wherever it may go, but no, I don't think anybody really thinks about where it goes. For Sun Media, I'm Lacey Adelik. Colin Emmanuel Medico was a precious gift given to us from God. Colin Amadiku is described by those who knew him as a lovable boy capable of capturing anyone's heart. <laughs> the 15-year-old boy died in the hospital Tuesday after being struck by a car late last week. He, 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 he was a lovable boy. It's like for some reason, like when he comes to you, it's like he touches everybody else's heart. He was so sweet. Just the thought of having to accept that he's gone. It was at this intersection where Colin Amaduku was struck by a car last Friday night while going to the movies with his friends. He was crossing against the traffic signal. A close friend says the special bond he shared with Amaduku will live on through a tattoo. So I never want to forget Colin. I always want to have him like, you know, part of him with me to carry on the legacy of their friendship. He's just the person to make you laugh. Like, he's the laugh, he's the one that will be laughing, and he's the one to make you laugh. As the community gathers to mourn, one thing remains the same. The boy everyone knew as a friend will live on in the memories of those who knew him. For Sun Media, I'm Lacey Adelik. <laughs>